Automated Creative are on a mission to reinvent advertising using artificial intelligence. We're a small team of startup folk who are really changing the way that advertising works. In the last few years, we've worked with brands like Adidas, Samsung, Diageo, Racket, KFC, Bernard Ricard, Bose, Unilever, GSK, Mondelez, the list goes on. And we are looking for account management talent. So if you know anyone who is kind of obsessed with creativity ads ai and account management if you could get them to email rhoda at automatedcreative.net that's rhoda r-h-o-d-a at automatedcreative.net and i will love you forever on with the show Hello and welcome to the Shiny New Object Podcast. My name is Tom Ollerton. I'm the founder of Automated Creative and this is a show about the future of marketing. Every week or so I have the privilege and the pleasure to interview one of our industry's leaders about their vision and this week is absolutely no different. I'm on a call with Monali Shah who is Head of Integrated Marketing Services Africa for the Coca-Cola Company. Manali, for anyone who doesn't know who you are and what you do, could you give us a bit of background and an overview? Sure. Um, hi, Tom and everyone. So my name is Manali Shah, as Tom said. Uh, I have another name I'm known by too, which is DJ Lil Mo, but that's a story for another day. Um, I look after IMX, which is Integrated Marketing Experiences for the Coca-Cola Company across the African continent. Uh, IMX is what we used to refer to as IMC, Integrated Marketing Communications, which we've sort of redefined. Um, I'm Kenyan, Kenyan Indian, and I currently live in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, in terms of background, I would say I have a bit of an abnormal or, or non-traditional journey, if I may call it. Uh, in fact, I, I sometimes say I got to traditional marketing <laughs> by fluke in quotes. Um, I started my career in the entertainment industry as a DJ actually in Kenya. Uh, I was part of um, a DJ group that was also an, um, an entertainment company in East Africa. And I got various experiences from sports um, to entertainment marketing, especially around music events, uh, you know, building and running a studio, both audio and video, talent management, hosting radio shows, uh, building entertainment-led campaigns, etc. cetera. Um, I think my biggest experience here I would call out is learning and, and building onto an entrepreneurial mindset because we, we started as, a, as just a group of DJs. By the time I left, we were like a fully-fledged entertainment company with a music and DJ academy. Um, over the years then, I, I worked at MTV, at different agencies, uh, building a brand experience division or, or, or a company uh, for brand experience um, until I worked at Ogilvy, um, where I got, um, that's where I moved into traditional IMC as we may know it. And I got quite a bit of experience in FMCG, telco, banking, you know, continued with entertainment marketing um, before transitioning to, to Coke, where I've been since 2014. So you were part of a successful DJ outfit, fully fledged entertainment company. Why did it all go wrong? Why did you give that up? That sounds amazing. <laughs> I actually didn't give it up. Um, well, I, I should rephrase that. I'm, I'm trying to start DJing again. It's one of my passions. I think just building on to different experiences, I somehow just ended up moving into the agency world. Um, so I worked for one of the WPP agencies in Kenya, which where I was actually, uh, you know, trying to build an experiential marketing division. And from that experience, I transitioned into traditional IMC. So I, I think that's where I just, because I was leading experiential and entertainment led campaigns, which was very rare at that time, because often you find experiential entertainment is support. It's not the, it's not the core of a campaign whilst I was doing something very different. And that's, I think what led me to my traditional marketing journey. But like I said, it, it was, it was by fluke. Even when I joined Ogilvy, I actually joined the company. To, to lead brand assets um, 
for um, for Airtel, uh, which is a telco um, in, in India and in Africa. And I ended up leading the whole rebranding exercise for the telco across the 15 countries in Africa. And that's when I started to get into my traditional INC journey. So in that unusual journey, what's been the best investment of your time, energy or money in your career? Um, I would say continuous learning in two ways. So there is academic and experiences. If you if you look at my career journey, it's very it's very non-linear. It's not the traditional journey that people take. And I know nowadays we talk about experience-led careers, but I don't think it was. It's always been the norm. And this is the one thing that has led me to where I am today: is having a multifaceted, um, experience-led um, journey. So. I've always said yes to the uncomfortable um, or, or tried to say yes to having different experiences. I think it helps you be creative. It helps you um, think of solving problems in, in different ways. And mostly it opens you up to so many different career paths and, and, um, and also ways you can impact people, communities and, and business. And I think from an academic perspective, it's... Um, it's continuous learning um, on on things that I'm curious about. Sometimes they don't even fall within what I'm doing professionally. Like I, I just signed up for a fintech course because I can see how this industry is booming in Africa, and I really want to know more about it. Um, and uh, you know, I, but I'm sure I'll learn something in this course that will provoke a different thought in what I do with my team right now. Uh, last year, I signed up for an eight-week digital marketing course just to refresh my knowledge. So I think just um, continuous learning has been an amazing investment of my time, energy, um, and money, actually. Um, and I do it in, I guess, small small pieces, if I may put it that way. Um, and the second thing which happened during COVID actually is a bike. So I have a spin bike at home because I couldn't go out to the gym or, you know, uh, to work out. So I ended up buying a bike. Um, and now I'm actually able to like just spin for 10 minutes in between meetings or, you know, in, when I wake up, if I don't have enough time for a full on workout, I can literally just put in 10 minutes of high intensity spin ride and I'm good for the day. So I think that has been an amazing investment for me. It just really helps me, um, I guess, clear my mind. So how do you want people to remember your career? The, the, at this point, they're going to remember it. It's been varied and uh, different backgrounds, different challenges, different teams, but where do you want to get to? What what does your career obituary look like? Um, that girl from Africa who contributed to changing the game for us in Africa and also had a huge impact on people and specifically the creative and music um, industries. Uh, there's a certain perception people have of Africa and somehow I've always found myself pushing for us to make a positive impact either on the people we work with or the image of Africa through all the work that I'm involved in. Um, I'll give you one example. Uh, have you ever heard about Cook Studio Africa? No. Okay. So, I mean, it's a passion project for me. Uh, it was basically the music platform for us in Africa that celebrated African music in a way that sort of brought together cultures, music and musicians from Africa and, and celebrated them across the world. Uh, I think the core of it was, was built around this TV and radio show that brought together artists uh, and music producers from across Africa to collaborate and make music together. Um, Africa is, is very diverse. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> That's my email. Um, 54 countries and it's full of different cultures. Um, and our music and musicians also vary across the different regions. Uh, before Cook Studio, most Africans didn't know music from other countries, including um, 
musicians from different countries. And, and I think from, from an industry perspective, we didn't really have a lot of cross-country collaborations across Africa. So I'm so proud to, you know, have been part of creating this impact, this change and enabling the cross-border celebration and creation. And on top of it, also introducing the world to African music, or at least playing a small part in it. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's a proud moment to actually say we had a role to play in developing, enabling and empowering the music industry um, from in, in Africa and, and as a rub off the entertainment industry, including the production industry as a whole. So what is your best marketing tip that you find yourself sharing most often? Um, I don't know if this is a tip or a grounding statement. Um, Suhana Gordon, um, she was one of our former ECDs um, uh, on our accounts. And we were in a conversation once. Um, I was sort of talking to her about a presentation I was making and, and sharing some you know, tips and learnings. Um, and I couldn't put words to what I was trying to explain. And she said to me, it's about how you make people feel. And, you know, um, and, and we were talking about like communication, right? We were talking about advertising and communication. Um, we've, you know, traditionally we've always had this, this, this question in a brief, how do you want to make people feel or how do you want people to feel? But I'm not sure we as marketers really take this as seriously. But if you take a step back and think about it, how we make people feel every time we interact with them is super important. Whether we're making them cry, laugh, feel proud of their identity, whatever it is, I think it's really important because it, it drives some sort of a, a connection, you know, with, with, with a human being. Um, and the second one actually is more of a learning for me, um, which is, which, which I think is true today more than ever is, focusing on the human being and the problem that we're trying to solve. Human, human beings are very complex, but, but we are also very simple. Um, and we, we sort of need to add value to be relevant. And, and if we see people as humans and help solve human problems, we'll win. I think it's that simple for me. This episode of the Shiny New Object podcast is brought to you in partnership with Manfest. Whether it's live in London or streamed online to the global marketing community, you can always expect a distinctive and daring blend of fast-paced content, startup innovation pitches, and unconventional entertainment from Madfest events. You'll find me causing trouble on stage, recording live versions of this podcast, and sharing a beer with the nicest and most influential people in marketing. Check it out at www.madfestlondon.com. So we're going to move on now to your shiny new object, which is culture, very broad. Mm -hmm. And it's being talked about a lot. Uh, so it's the, the cultures of certainly in the workplace are, are kind of changing, evolving things, especially after the last couple of years. So it would be great to you, for you to describe why you've chosen culture as your shiny new object. Um, I guess that culture is a very <laughs> broad subject. I think for me, it's really important and relevant now. Um, so I started a new role in January and I've been building a team for IMX um, in Africa from scratch um, since, since January. And um, to me, I, I feel like culture is organizational or team culture is probably one of the most important things when it comes to fueling growth of a company because you know at the end of the day it's human beings that we're working with and it's the culture that creates an environment whether it's a nurturing one where people thrive or or the opposite um so so for me um you know outside of the functional capabilities one of the biggest things was to focus on culture um, ensuring the team that we put in place can actually add to the culture in a positive way and, and will fit into the culture that we want. And I know there's a lot of different sort of ingredients 
um, that go into creating an awesome culture where people thrive um, and, you know, maybe we can get into that one day. But, but for today, I think I, I probably want to focus on, on diversity and inclusion. Um, this is it, this is a bit personal to me. Um, when growing up, um, I did go through quite a bit of exclusion, um, if I may call it, whether it was through colorism or, or other things. And, and I think a really good thing came out of it, which is I naturally just became very inclusive of, of people and, and every aspect of people. So I became very curious to understand other people and cultures. Um, and we, when we talk about diversity and, and inclusion, I, I actually don't believe there's diversity without inclusion. And that's, that's a really important point. And, and when I talk about diversity, I mean all kinds of diversity, gender, race, thoughts, background, experience, everything, you know, um, if, if we aren't open to embracing the differences, we won't be inclusive of each other. Um, if we're not open to embracing, um, sorry about that. <laughs> if we're not open to, to embracing our differences, I don't think we'll be very inclusive of each other. Um, and, and we really won't be able to bring to life the concept um, of diversity. So if I think about Africa, as I was you know, building a team, we have 54 countries. We have very diverse regions. We, we, have, you know, we have some similarities, which is the, 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 the vibrancy the energy of people of Africa, the kindness, the entrepreneurial spirit and mindset, all of those are similarities. But then we also have differences, differences in culture, differences in backgrounds. We have North Africa, we have West Africa, Central Africa, South Africa, East, you know, we have the islands. There's so much diversity. So if we, if we think about that, and if I had to put together a team, that sort of is able to work with each other across Africa and bring to life some amazing work across Africa, I think diversity and inclusion becomes a really, really uh, big thing um, to drive good culture uh, because we need people to be working to each other, uh, with each other, and we need people also to be building on, on the work that each other do. Um, and I think empathy and, and sort of compassion play a big role when it comes to, to bringing this to life. Um, I think if, if we try and understand each other's differences and motivations behind our actions, so sometimes there's cultural differences, right? I mean, I, like I may do, do something that you may be offended by, but it's, it really isn't, I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm, it's just maybe my, my culture or, or, you know, it might not be offensive where I come from. So I think if we just take a step back and try and understand the, the other person, um, we'll be able to be more inclusive and then bring to life diversity. And, and hiring this way, I think, really helps a lot. Like when, when I look at... Look, look at my team. I'm so proud because like, I, I really love the culture and the environments we've created. Um, like there's, there's no competition between the team. Uh, I, I can see so much collaboration and, you know, a very helpful spirit. It brings to life like a can do attitude. Um, people who perform, uh, you know, high performance um, it is kind of like their own personal requirements as an example. So I think, I think it's just for me, um, the, the rub off of, of making sure that um, we, we have a diverse and inclusive team, the impact of it is, is really big in, in creating that environment, but also, you know, um, affecting the, the, the outputs. I guess if I may put it that way. So how do you hire in that situation? Like how do you make sure that you're dipping into the right pools of talent in order to staff up in that diverse way? Um I, I would say 
Okay, and being open, um, you know, like being open to uh, it starts. It starts with the brief, right? Like, who are you trying to hire? What are you trying to? to what are you looking at um, when it comes to this person? Um, but also just um, making sure that you're looking at, I guess, talent from across Africa. Um, from across the different um, regions, um, just trying to balance it out. And as, as you're hiring, just, just making sure that you're actually embracing um, the differences and, and sort of trying to bring in those differences as well to help build that diverse that diverse team uh, differences in every way. I mean, it's not including functional, right? Where people can learn from each other. And what are, what are the challenges you found with building this team with this ambition in mind? What have been the things that you wish you'd done differently if you're going to have that time again? Um, the biggest challenge was probably the, the amount of time it, it took me to hire because I, I really wanted to make sure I had the right team. So, so I, I would say it's just, it, it's probably um, the time. I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to finish putting the, the team together. Um, in terms of what I would do differently, I, I, don't, I don't think I have anything that I, I, I would say right now that I would do differently. I, I've been pretty intentional about making sure that we, you know, that 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 we are all intentional about um, about having a diverse and, and inclusive team. That where we are like building an amazing culture as well. And so what advice would you give to someone who's about to follow in your footsteps, someone who believes in your methodology and your vision, uh, but yet they're like, oh, where do I start? What advice would you give to them today to get moving in that direction? I would say be open. Just, just be open. I mean, try and not have any biases. Um, be open to... to sort of uh, not just change, but to, to differences. Um, look wide, look far and wide, um, you know. Uh, and, and second thing is also just be, be really clear um, in terms of what is it that you're looking for? What, what is the, start with what is the, the culture that you want to create? What is the team environment? that you want to create. Um, and then from there, like, what is, what is it when, if you're talking about the values, if you're talking about like, uh, you know, the, the diversity and inclusion, what, you know, what is it that you feel you need for your team or you want in your team? And once, I think once you're clear about that, it's, you're able to look far and wide and, and re, like, and, and, and sort of, um, reach the right people so unfortunately we're at the end of the podcast and i know there's going to be listeners who are really inspired and are going to want to reach out to you to discuss this how would you like them to do that um i believe linkedin would be the best way um to reach out to me and what makes a great linkedin message to you to help help those people get the right thing in front of you to save yours and their time what what makes a really brilliant outreach if it's something that feels personal if it's something where i can add some value or impact in a in a positive way um, i try and respond as soon as i can that's fantastic advice manali thank you so much for your time thank you Hi, just before you go, I'd really appreciate it if you could take the time to write a review of the Shiny New Object podcast on Apple Podcasts or iTunes, whatever it's called these days, or whichever podcast provider you use. We're an indie podcast, so it would go a long way for us if you could just share the word and 
give us a bit of a support on those channels. That would just be fantastic. If you haven't got time, that's also cool. And yeah, if you could tell your colleagues about the podcast and also, if possible, don't forget to subscribe. And I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, if you'd like to speak on the podcast or be a guest or you think I'm asking the wrong questions, anything, I'd be super interested to hear what you think. So please email me at tom at automatedcreative.net. That's T-O-M at, uh, I'm not going to bother spelling it. Anyway, you'll work it out. Thanks so much.